Today, another new mongoose. I just reviewed the new mongoose Ardor X1. A bike with wide tires, one by drivetrain, a tapered head tube on that 17 inch frame. The first Walmart mongoose with all the new generation features, as I'm calling them. We've seen them on Schwinn's, which are the mongoose bike's relatives, for about a year or so. However, be it Mongoose or Schwinn, there has been one void in the next-gen big box lineup. We haven't seen anything with these updated features that also has a rear suspension. That changes today. Behold the Mongoose Ledge X1. This is going to be a big deal, no doubt. And remember, up to this point, trail-capable full suspension bikes at Walmart, we've really only had the XR Pro and the Hydroform. That's it. The reason? Because there are a lot of parts involved in making the rear half of a bike move independently from the front. Full suspension plus budget, not an easy combo. Plus all these new gen features. I'm going to get right to it because I know this just came out and many of you want to make an informed shopping decision, so here we go. Component rundown, lots of this we just saw on the Ardor. It was awesome there. Awesome here too, like these wider bars. Dabbling at the 740 millimeter wide range, 31.8 millimeter diameter, mongoose oversized. The new stem made the cut shorter, around 35 millimeters, and slam low, the lowest I've seen on big box bikes. Both the Ardor and the ledge, very aggressive up top. Honeycomb. Not the serial, the grip pattern, Mongoose branded. Nestled beside the right grip, the only shifter, the ProRush 7 speed shifter for the drivetrain. Mechanical disc brake levers, they're alloy. And remember, wasn't long ago, these were plastic on most big box bikes. And of course, new gen means the tapered head tube has arrived zero stack. So this can accept a tapered fork up into the head tube as it should be. This factory fork though, a straight steer adapted to fit this head tube. There is no preload adjustment or manual lockout, but it does have 100 millimeters of travel. These are slightly better forks than we see on some big box bikes. Nothing fancy, Element branded. The same Element fork that's on the new Ardor. For the X1 series, alloy up top, but still lowers with dropouts for the front quick release to bite onto. The double wall alloy rims also Element branded, and these are wrapped with the new Compass 275 by 2.60 tires wide. This extra width really looks good visually with this full suspension frame. Mongoose's base pedals kick off the one by drivetrain, a little different here from the Ardor in that these are HDL branded. For the ledge, they're still 170 millimeter crank arms with a single 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring. At the back of the drivetrain, big, big news a year ago, but now popping up on all the new gen bikes, which is a good thing, the ProRush derailleur. Still impressive that we get a clutch derailleur at big box pricing. That derailleur is working through the seven speeds on the ProRush branded freewheel. Another unheard of thing here, seven speeds. A freewheel 14 to 38 tooth range. But what's so special here is that this is the first time we've seen this configuration on a full suspension bike. A suspension that from my first impressions looks to be well made, very XR Pro-esque. The factory rear shock, I can't even make out the name, I think it says Shinge or something similar to that. The coil spring rating, 850 pounds per inch. My pre-ride bounce test showed there is a little bit of adjustment range, but I don't ever have high expectations for these factory springs, so we'll see how it works out on the trail. And there's more to this than just this shock, because a rear suspension system, it's very complicated. That means a ride in time, the only true reveals. Aside from being full suspension, the frame itself 17 inches for the X1. This is an alloy frame, the finish blue, and what you're seeing on camera actually relays pretty much the actual color. Surprise frame bonus, internal cable routing. But what's that second port on the left side down low? Well, that's internal cable routing for a dropper post, making this frame dropper ready. And dropper ready with full internal cable routing for that dropper. Now the dropper not included. This is BYOD, bring your own dropper. If you don't want to do that and stick with the factory setup, you'll get a quick release seat post clamp that keeps the alloy 27.2 millimeter seat post in place. An upgrade over the Ardor's post with a better clamp assembly. The saddle's slightly different. It looks similar, the same dimensions, but this is a printed mongoose labeling rather than the embossed. Another look here at the blue frame, again 17 inch with this nice finish. The graphics all orange accents that are stickers, easily removed. One of mine even came partially pre-removed. A quick mention of the mechanical disc brakes, and yes, that is a bolt-on rear wheel. The quick release up front only. Both brakes 160 millimeter rotors. Kickstand, chainstay mounted here. On the Ardor it was center mounted and it kind of rubs on the tire bit. I'll follow up on that, but either easy to remove if that's not your thing. 
That's a lot of stuff, and as you see, it's a lot of what we wanted to see with a few price point trade-offs, but can we work with this? And is it gonna work on a trail out of the box? Like with many big box bikes, the fork is gonna be the main limitation here, but this 100 millimeters, it does give a noble effort and somewhat dampen out the ride here on the Rudy warm-up loop. The rear makes a noticeable difference, having a suspension, I'll come back to this. First, let me talk about fitment. Like the Ardor, this 17-inch frame with the new geometry, the new bars, it fits my 5-10-inch frame with my 31-inch inseam like a glove. Aided by the fact that these are 27.5 tires, puts me right in my comfort zone. The big question for me was the full squish, how much that was going to rob from my climbing ease. You know, I like those easy climbs, and this is a little different because there is some give, but it's not a pogo stick. There's also the extra weight, it's a portly 40 pounds. All that factored in, I can still climb with relative ease thanks to the bike's gearing. But there is a difference because the back half of the frame is moving on the ledge, but in all the acceptable ways. Pivots are up and down, not side to side, and if you're hearing a squeak that's my shoes on the crank arm not the rear shock this is a budget rear suspension but it does smooth the ride to a noticeable degree especially beneficial at top speed where it keeps the rear tire better planted on the ground over bumps and that's a good thing smoothness that's enough that i didn't even need a gimbal for this footage and that says something this is noticeably more stable than when i've tried it on hardtail bikes which i've tried countless times and had to ditch the footage. Now I'm not saying this is a bike capable of barreling down rock gardens at full speed or taking jumps in its factory form, but it's certainly not the ride I envision when I think of a typical full suspension bike at Walmart. This fits right in with the rare gems, the XR Pro and the Hydroform. A good first impression with this bike. Notable observations on my first ride. I like that the Mongoose team gave us the features that we want, the carryovers from the Schwinn bikes, Adding to that beefy wheels and a full suspension definitely ups the ante. And I had questions. I was curious how the Pro Rush clutch would work with a moving rear frame. Just fine. On par with its usual performance. I will be publishing full official specs. Once the Mongoose team gets them over to me, I want to get it right. But I do want to mention one thing. A lot of people have asked me about the bottom bracket. They're 68mm on both the Ardor and this Ledge X1. I'm also happy that I can report the new Mongoose bikes. I'm two for two with these generic disc brakes. You never know, but they work just fine out of the box. Pivots. So far, not a peep or a complaint. This is a similar design to the XR Pro, though we'll be digging into the work soon. See what's hiding underneath in these critical areas. I don't expect that I'm going to find anything I'll have a problem with, but stay tuned for more info. So far, this looks like a good frame, and I see a lot of potential here. There are a couple of initial gripes. They're mostly the same as the Ardor. The bolt-on rear wheel, though, as someone pointed out, putting a hollow axle for a quick release on this free wheel may create more issues than gains. Also, the fork, it's flexy with these wide tires, especially so, and it's going to keep the bike from any out-of-the-box riding that's not in line with the Ardor's capabilities, anything I talked about in that review. All that said, give me the taper, the perfect size for me frame, and the pile of parts that I have already purchased. So 100% project bike material, project ledge X1 coming soon. Pricing. Now I was given early access to this bike so I only know the retail price which is $468 but the actual selling price usually a little different than that and I don't know that at the time that I'm putting this video together but check the title because I'll put the launch pricing there and now comment below because I know you have opinions on this bike so let me hear it and let me also know if you are as excited as I am about finally a new full suspension next generation mongoose bike. So comment below, thanks for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.